This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama and romance film called The Sleeping Dictionary. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. When the British Empire still reigns over colonial lands, young men are sent to distant countries to serve as administrators. One of these men is John Truscott, a native Englishman who arrives in Sarawak. Expecting to be met by officials, John is instead welcomed by a native, Belansai, who knows how to speak English. John is then taken to meet Henry Bullard, the district governor, who takes him on a ride in a car pulled by carabaos. On the way, Henry comments that John's got far too good of a degree to be in Sarawak. So John explains that his late father was stationed there before and developed plans to bring education to the Iban people. The plans were not implemented since his father died in the war, so John intends to continue his work. Henry takes John to a house that he'll be living in during his stay and tells him he's got an invitation to a tribe gathering tomorrow. Before John could ask more, Henry leaves him wondering about his job. At the gathering, John is presented to the head of their longhouse Malacca and is offered to drink rice wine. John initially refuses, but Belansai tells him it's an insult to refuse, so John is forced to drink. When he turns to look at the lady who brought the drinks, Salima, John is momentarily struck by her beauty. At the height of the ceremony, Salima performs a traditional dance with other local women, and John is entirely captivated by her. After their performance, John is asked to entertain the crowd, so he recites an English poem that nobody finds entertaining. Embarrassed and drunk, John pulls up Belansai and dances with him, to the utter amusement of everyone. The following morning, Henry tells John that mining concessions have been trespassing within the local boundaries. But the Longhouse captured and beheaded Chinese miners before Henry got to them. He assigns John to bring in the heads, but before they can continue, Malacca and Salima arrive. Henry then explains that Salima is to live with John to perform wifely duties. John is baffled by this practice, so Salima and Henry explain that she's a sleeping dictionary, a local woman set to European officers to get intimate and learn the language with. At first, John declines, thinking Salima is being forced to do it. But Salima tells him she's willingly picked him. Her mother was also a sleeping dictionary and conceived her with an Englishman, making Salima half English. The arrangement will also help her improve her English, which is what she wants. John accepts her service to teach him but refuses to sleep with her, angering Henry and offending Salima. That evening, Salima stays at John's house but sleeps in a separate room. One day, Belansai pulls a prank on John, bringing him monkey heads instead of the Chinese miners. So everyone in the tribe laughs at him. Salima gets upset that they're making a fool of John, and they both walk out. At home, John's chef, famous, brings him a young man to be a sleeping dictionary, thinking John swings that way. John is outraged and, in his anger, fires Salima. Salima retaliates by firing him instead and walks out of the house. The next day, John finds Salima under the house, declaring that she lives there now. John asks her to return to the longhouse, but Famous tells him she can't as everyone will ridicule her since she failed to seduce John. John clarifies that he doesn't want to sleep with her because of his beliefs and that he finds her very beautiful. He asks for them to try again and Salima accepts. One day, John meets Henry's wife Aggie, who advises him to sleep with Salima or else people will think he's got problems down there. That evening, John and Salima practice some phrases, and though they appear to have become more friendly, they still end up sleeping in different rooms. Through thin, woven walls, Salima asks if John has ever been with a woman. He tells her that he hasn't, not until he gets married. So Salima comments that he will be bad in bed and make his wife unhappy. They touch fingers through a hole in the wall, and John asks why she picked him. Salima says it's because his dance wasn't an Englishman's. They linger for a while before falling asleep. The next morning, as Salima and John interact with the local children, Belansai arrives and tells John it's pointless for his people to learn the English culture. John accepts his point, but also challenges him to a competition. The challenge is to hold their breath underwater longer than the other, so the two men head to the river and promptly submerge themselves. Minutes pass with everyone watching until Belansai comes up for air. Belansai initially gets upset at being bested by a foreigner, but grows curious when John stays submerged twice as long as Belansai before coming up for air. John gloats for a moment, then reveals he used an oxygen tank to breathe underwater. This event makes people take John more seriously, and he finally gets the Chinese miner's heads for Henry. That evening, Salima and John bond over stories that they've both read in childhood. They move on to practicing saying body parts in their languages as they touch each other until they get to the lips. John leans in to kiss Salima, and she kisses him back. This leads them to get intimate and finally sleep with each other. Soon, they share the bed regularly, and John gets better at speaking the local tongue. One night, he asks Salima why she always leaves after the deed is done, so she explains that in their culture, waking up together would mean they were engaged, and John wouldn't want that. 
Eventually, John is invited to a dinner with the Bullards where he meets their daughter Cecil. She plans to study the Iban as she previously lived in the community before being sent back to England. Cecil brings up the sleeping dictionary custom, thinking it's a ridiculous myth. When Henry suggests that such a custom can't possibly create more intimate feelings other than convenience, John disagrees. This agitates Henry, stressing that an English officer can't turn his back on his duty, family, and country. Sometime after, Cecil follows John around as she tries to learn more about the Iban people. During a competition to settle a land dispute, Cecil notices Salima and attempts to photograph her. This annoys Salima, so she asks John to make her stop. John tries, but he's called by Henry as they've discovered sick people from the Yakata tribe washing up from the river. Henry finds it unusual that these people ended up far from their homes. Despite Aggie's worries, John resolves to travel with Salima and Belansai upstream to find out what happened. Later, Aggie approaches John and tells him that she and Henry will ensure that his schools will be built if John gets engaged to their daughter. John is surprised by this, so Aggie lets him be, telling him not to think about it for too long. That evening, John comes home and apologizes to Salima for not stopping Cecil earlier. Jealous, Salima lashes out at John, telling him he's like all the men she'd been with. John claims he thought they had something special, but Salima points out that despite being half English, she doesn't seem to be good enough for him. Stunned by her words, he walks away, leaving her crying. The following day, John and the others travel to investigate what is happening in the remote Yakata tribe. There, they discover more people afflicted with the mysterious disease. An outsider attempts to shoot John but misses, so John and Belansai track the shooter and discover European miners collecting pure silver nearby. They return to the village, where they find Salima feeling sick while the villagers have gone away. When the villagers return later, they accuse John of bringing the disease. To appease them, John asks Salima to convince them to share food with them, but he learns that the Yakata tribe doesn't grow rice. This leads John to realize that the miners traded poisoned rice with the tribe to clear the mining area. Learning this, the warriors attack the foreign miners and wipe them out. Alone in the village, John professes his love for Salima, hoping to stay with her forever. Salima shares his feelings but worries that they must flee to stay together, so John promises to sort it out. Later, to thank them for their help, the Yakata people present them with handmade bracelets, which Salima immediately exchanges between John and her as a symbol of their love. Upon returning, John talks to Henry about marrying Salima, but Henry is against it. He shares that he also left his own sleeping dictionary out of Judy despite being in love with her. John argues that Judy led to his father's death just so an old general could be knighted. This leads to a screaming match that's interrupted when Aggie comes to take Henry away. Meanwhile, Salima also tries to convince her people to let her marry John. But Belansai warns her that the English will charge him and John with the murder of the white miners if she doesn't give him up. At the same time, Henry and Aggie offer for John to go home for a year, otherwise they'll send him to prison. However, John hurriedly leaves for Salima but finds her imprisoned in the longhouse. Despite John's attempts to free her, Salima is left with no choice but to give him up to save him from imprisonment. John returns to England and marries Cecil a year later. On their honeymoon night, Cecil admits to knowing about his sleeping dictionary, but assures him that she's glad since John already knows how to be intimate while she has no clue. Cecil asks what happened to Salima, so John tells her she married Belansai according to Henry's letter. Soon, John and Cecil return to Sarawak to continue John's work, where they are welcomed by the first class of the first Iban school. John asks Cecil if she would like to teach there and Cecil eagerly accepts. That evening, as the Englishmen are watching a film with local officials, Cecil notices John looking intently at locals outside the fence. At home, Cecil tries to seduce John, but it backfires, leading her to admit that she's unhappy and jealous of what John shared with Salima. John tries to appease Cecil, telling her that he wants their relationship to work too. Their conversation is interrupted when they hear Famous drunkenly knocking over something. Cecil asks him to fire him, but John argues that the chef has been with him since he arrived. Still, Cecil insists that Famous dislikes her and prefers Salima. The next day, John takes Famous to Neville Shipperty, another British official. He offers Famous as Neville's new chef to appease Cecil. However, they discover that Neville has been beating up his sleeping dictionary Tipong. John confronts him, but Neville merely mocks John's love for Salima and reveals that he intended to marry Cecil had John not taken her first. That evening, John overhears Aggie advising her daughter to forget about getting her husband to love her. Seeing Cecil heartbroken over this, John walks over and kisses her in front of Aggie. Eventually, as John and his team collect rocks to study at the riverside, he sees Salima and Belansai with their son. Seeing the boy with blue eyes and blonde hair, John hurries home and confirms with Famous that the baby, Mandar, is his. John attempts to bribe Famous into arranging a meeting with Salima, but Famous had already tried before he even asked. Unfortunately, Salima refuses to see him, so John devises another way, instructing Famous to tell Salima that Tipong is hurt and needs her help. That night, Salima arrives at the house and finds John waiting for her. She tries to avoid him, but John pleads to see their son. John hears the baby outside, so Salima goes to take him away. 
stressing that they'd be executed if they were seen together. When John catches up to them, Salima insists that he's Balansai's son now, as he was willing to marry her even when he knew she was pregnant. Still, she lets John see the baby, so he recites a passage from a fairy tale to Mandar. The following morning, Aggie catches John carving a wooden toy boat and assumes that he and Cecil are expecting a child. John pretends he's preparing for when Cecil is finally pregnant, but Aggie catches on and tells him that the only reason she stayed with Henry in Sarawak is to keep him from returning to his native girl. She also threatens John in case he's thinking of leaving Cecil. Despite this, John spends time with Salima and their son in the river, unaware that Neville knows they've been seeing each other. When Belansai learns about John spending time with his wife, tribal customs force him to attack John, but he only wounds him instead of killing him. Because Belansai attacked a colonial officer, the English law dictates for him to be executed, and Henry blames John for the mess he's created. Henry tells him that he should have let Salima and Mandar be, revealing that he did the same since he's Salima's father. Salima doesn't know this, and Henry admits that he allowed her to be John's sleeping dictionary because he thought he'd treat her well, but not as well as he actually did. Still, Henry insists that it's better this way since it won't be fair to his wife if he'd turn away from his duty to her. At Belansai's trial, John attempts to save him from the death penalty, but Belansai fully confesses to the deed to save face in front of his tribe's people. John only gets to postpone the sentencing to another day. That night, Salima goes to John to plead for her husband's life, unaware that Cecil is watching them. The following day, the trial begins and John is forced to sentence Belansai to be hanged. Later, Salima sneaks into the officer's house to steal the keys to Belansai's prison, only to find the key missing. She runs to Belansai's cell and discovers that John had already let him out. John hands him a gun and lets him escape into the forest. John urges Salima to run away together, telling her to meet with him by the docks. Salima doesn't believe he would go, but John professes that he'd rather have her than a country, language, or history. With this, they share a passionate kiss. The next morning, Henry berates John, knowing that he freed Belansai but can't prove it. Outside, Salima tries to find refuge in the Englishman's barracks since the longhouse has turned on her. Aggie lets her and her son go with Neville, who has agreed to take her as a sleeping dictionary. Meanwhile, John is caught off guard when Cecil tells him she's pregnant, effectively wrecking his plans to run away with Salima and Mandar. That evening, Neville humiliates Salima, so she knocks him out with a clock, and Famous helps her escape. At their home, Cecil discovers John writing a goodbye letter to her. She takes this quietly, already knowing what he intends to do. She recalls growing up without her parents since Aggie wouldn't let Henry out of her sight. Cecil admits that she thought John loved her when he proposed but she always knew he was in love with someone else. She then decides she won't settle to simply be happy enough, hoping to find a connection with someone like John feels for Salima. Finally, she lets her husband go, assuring him that it's better this way. Salima and Famous arrive at the docks, but John isn't there yet. By the time John gets there, he only finds Famous, who tells him that Salima went to the river to escape. However, Henry finds her first as she prepares to leave. He tries to stop her, but guilt overpowers him, so he hands her a gun instead for protection. Salima accepts, saying it's her second present. She shows the book of fairy tales in her bag, confirming that she knew Henry was her father all along, as he's the one who gave her the book when she was young. They embrace and bid tearful goodbyes before Henry helps her on her way. Later, Aggie is disappointed that both Henry and Cecil refuse to go after John and Salima, so she arranges for Neville to find them. Both John and Neville trek the dangerous mountain to get to Salima. Soon, John reunites with Salima, only to be interrupted by Neville, who was just waiting for John to appear. Holding them at gunpoint, he orders them to handcuff themselves. Once they're shackled, Neville starts to touch Salima and threatens to kill them once he's done with her. Angered, John frees himself and attacks Neville, but he's overpowered and beaten to the ground. With the gun from Henry, Salima shoots Neville in the arm, but the gun jams right after. Before Neville can hurt them further, Yakata warriors arrive and kill Neville, rescuing John, Salima, and the baby. Eventually, the Yakata tribe accepts the family as their own. Elderly women from the tribe sing songs in their language, and Salima translates to John that they're preparing to make a new village somewhere else. They're invited to join them, so John accepts, as long as he's with his family. The two then stand and dance in a paradise of their own making. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.